All righty then, let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, I'll open with uh, a prayer here. Good. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you, we praise you. We thank you for your mercy and grace. And Lord, we just uh, pray for this conference and, and for those of us that feel led to, to witness these people trapped up in these different systems. Give us uh, your power and your wisdom. And uh, just thank you for this conference and all the people here today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, for those that don't know me, uh, my, my name is Mark Rockman. I've <laughs> uh, been involved in uh, this area in Kevin Cult, worked for many years since 1977. And some of my fellow workers here, Dave Clark and Eric come here. We've all known each other for a long time. Um, Today, though, what I'm going to be focusing on is a group called The Move. And Dave Clark, some of you went to his presentation, and he was talking about these super apostles, the manifest sons of God, and the, all you know the different variations of the, of the groups. And as Dave pointed out, with William Branham, who gave the impartation to the group that he was in, uh, called The Walk of the Church of the Living Word. One thing that's interesting about this group, though, the, the, the leader in all my research, he's got his own impartation directly from God, and he's and, and there is a connection which I'll talk about, where he didn't have anybody lay hands on him. This was a big thing in this movement. You hear those words impartation, you know, they pass the magic, um, and so. But uh, another name of the move is the Body of Christ. Uh, and today, actually, I'll be talking about it, their new name, and even though they still use a lot of the old names, is the International Ministerial Association. And they, uh, they have their own web page. You can go on there and even li listen to tapes of the original leader, Sam Fife, who's uh, this individual here. That it's hard to find uh, good pictures of him. What's interesting about Sam, he graduated... Uh, from the Southern Baptist Seminary in New Orleans in March of 1957. That's sort of rare compared to uh, a lot of these guys that he got the kind of education, you know, that he did. And it said he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit while pastoring Bible Baptist Church. And, uh, and then he said he was called by God directly. God spoke to him audibly. He calls it the divine order. And everything he writes and... Uh, when, when he would put out the rules and uh, for the group and what they should do came from God directly you know, to him by you know, audible voices. Um, and he, so he goes to Miami and he starts his first church called the Miami Revival Center. This is, this, uh, is in 1961 when he finally uh, gets set up there in Florida. And, and one thing I want to say real quick, uh, before I go further, one of the reasons I, I really got into this, about 14 months ago, I, I got calls from two different individuals, a, a girl by the name, or a woman, I should say, by the name of Lisa Kendall, and another one, Gloria Williams, who lives up in Alaska. And they got my name actually through ISCA, through Mike Langoni and the, uh, the, the International Cultic Studies Association. And they started telling me about the, the both of them grew up in this group. We call them second generations. A lot of people get, and they join cults. And of course, as they're in it for a long time, they have children, and they grow up in it. They, and talking to these people on the phone, and um, just to hear the horrific things they went through, which, uh, growing up, and you know, as children in this group, and just a lot of damaged you know, people out there. But that's what started me in this, and as I was talking to them, and what really amazed me, because I called Dave right away, and I didn't even, I'll be honest, in all the years I've been investigating cults, 14, up until 14 months ago, I didn't even know this group existed. Somehow it flew by me, and uh, I called Dave up right away, and he goes, yeah, they're a lot like the group I was in, you know, the Church of the Living Word. And, and, um, and there is some connections that have happened with the two groups, which I'll, I'll point out, you know, as time goes on. This is other photos of Sam Fife. This is his airplane. He used to fly around in that. Uh, matter of fact, uh, he, he told his followers he would never die and never age. Well, the never aging, pro I guess, <laughs> came true because in 1976 that he died in that airplane you see there with two of his followers. The plane went down in, uh, I believe, Guatemala. And uh, so... Um, 
This is in 1971, if I began to teach uh, that the tribulation and the second coming of Christ were near, uh, began to preach a message that end time saints must go to the wilderness. And this is one thing that sort of sets him apart. He started setting up farms all over the United States, Colombia, uh, several countries in Europe, uh, and the people were to go in the wilderness because that's where he believed that that they could rule the world from the head. And, and another thing he thought, he said, you can be better trained there. You can be separate from the world and better trained to, uh, you know, to, to eventually reign and rule, which, they, which is all part of the, uh, the manifest sons of God's teaching. So um, the end time farms, he called them. And it says here, yeah, five and three of his American fathers died April 26, 1979 in Guatemala and he would always say he'd never age and this is something he would he said here when asked uh, what his age was he would simply answer I am <laughs> oh, um, man. so I mean you know, all know what he was claiming there right yeah. claiming you know to be God oh, wow. so but the aging process the only thing that came through the aging process of st stopped because he was killed in an airplane crash but <coughs> he said he was God yeah, I got a chariot going out. Now this I put in because what's really neat, a lot of these young women especially, and some of the men, but more of the women that grew up in this, because the men were physically beaten, but they weren't sexually abused as much, obviously, as the guys were. But there's a the girl I'm talking about, she lives up by Fairbanks, Alaska, Glory. Uh, she started this, this, this group just started in January of 2013, last year, and they have a a web page, um, and, and this is Move Forward Incorporated. They also have a Facebook page. You can go on that one if you're ever interested. And what's neat about that, sometimes you'll see the ex-members talking to each other, uh, you know, what they experienced and uh, things like that. They have another page that's, that's closed to the outside world, which is called the Survivors page. The only one that's allowed in there, which I, I can respect, is those that, you know, uh, grew up in the group or were part of it. And this here, this is a picture of Glory in Alaska. This is her brother. This, this story is incredible. If you follow the newspapers up in Alaska, he has Down syndrome. And she has eight other brothers and sisters. Uh, they, uh, they're all other of her family is still in the group, including her parents. And that's another thing that the second generation are coming out, but their, their families are still there, which makes it even harder. They have no support. Uh, out, outside. Now, the reason is she's been fighting, and I give her, she's pretty feisty. I give, uh, I give credit. He, they, this group, like I said, is into real heavy abuse discipline. They used to beat this kid and trying to cast the demons out of him because they believed that the Down syndrome was a demonic uh, type of deal. Go ahead. You know, I don't know if this is of interest, but I was raised in the move. I, I didn't know if this was the move that I was raised in, but it's but this is so interesting. This is the one. Well, you, this is the one. You feel free to jump in. And well, I want to tell you a story that I found out about ahead. a special needs child because I had a special needs child, and so after we got out, there was, um, and by the way, they say this with a complete straight face, they do believe that disabilities are demons. And yeah. so they actually, with a child that had a disability that was having epileptic seizures, they actually uh, were on his chest laying on him to cast the demons out, and he actually died. And the and there's you know and remember they live you know we're isolated, and so there's no accountability. They and, and there's no police, there's no oversight, and they're like, well, you know, basically they always blame the demons, and the brother was so upset that he ran into the woods and he was 14 years old and they didn't even send a search party out to go find the boy so the parent mm. lost two children in this wow which which you know, farm were you on you know we were up in canada and my i mean all yeah. my extended family was raised in it they were raised down in peru by brother-in-law and his seven siblings were all raised in the peru farm and then um, we were all on and off farms up in canada so, I mean, we're all ex-Movites. Yeah, I've only been in touch through emails with one guy from, his last name is Kier. I don't, okay. know, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but I have some pictures of him. Well, I'm, boy, I'm really, really thankful you're here. This is, mm -hmm. this is I'm great. I'm a small world, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
You were in the move also? Well, I want to get together with you guys. Because the one thing I've been having a hard time is finding next members here in Colorado because they never had a farm here. Right. And, Just um, a body. A body house. And so, well, you might get involved with uh, with Glory and I'll give her you know, their, all their contact information. Well, see, that this is pretty cool. Really, two people, you know, that, that grew up in the group. So I'm going to... Uh, Go, you know, go on. This is another picture of Glory. She's she has spent thousands of dollars trying to get. Now his her husband uh, w was in the move too, because uh, her la her maiden name is Gloria Steiner, and now it's Gloria Williams, and um, they they both grew up. They got married. Um, they're the only ones. One thing as you see when I go through this, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this, is that there, that's it. Uh, the only couple that I know of that still claim to be Christian, and uh, and I'm saying that I know of because a lot of these people that I've been talking to are atheists, they're uh, agnostics, they hate God, they uh, and you know and all the other things. And I praise God for that. She told me when she first came out, she came out of the group in 2010, and she said when she first came out, she went to a UPC church because she had no idea what was on the outside world. And she told me she goes, I was there four months, and she says. I'm in the same thing all over again. <laughs> Good discernment there. Yeah. Um, go ahead. The United Pentecostals, the yeah. Oneness Pentecostals, very legalistic. Uh, Jesus only. Jesus only. Yeah. The, um, so, but I hope she wins this case uh, and gets him. I mean, thank God, you know, you know that he's out of there and she's trying to get custody of him, and she's been in and out of court up there. Um, so. And this is uh, uh, her statement. I just wanted to put it in a move forward to aid and support individuals who have been impacted by Sam Fife's move of God cult. To relieve the suffering and promote the highest quality of life possible for former members of the move, their families, children, and vulnerable adults still within the cult community who maybe experience domestic violence and abuse. So I, and that's her mission statement. I'm sure a few of them work together. You know, and, and it's really neat what they're doing because you really need this. Especially for people that grew up in it. You know, for years, a lot of us here have been dealing with people that went into cults and did interventions to help them get out. But they had lives before. They don't have anything, a lot of these people, to relate with. And when they get out, it's hard even to make simple decisions. And uh, so, uh, and of course, yeah, Move Forward founded October 2013 by Glory Williams. Move of God, cult survivor, in conjunction with other move survivors. So... <laughs> She was inspired by her own, uh, legal proceedings to found a group that could provide support to other moves of uh, survivors in similar situations. There was, were you, were you two in a Yahoo group at all that was online? Because they had over 350 ex-members on that. They're, they're not communicating anymore like they used to. Um, yeah, and she goes into, uh, the movement for this article was induced uh, through our suffering from witnessing my family's slow deterioration. And that's what it's called today, uh, the International Ministries Association. And um, like I said, uh, the headquarters for the move now is this property. They bought actually a town in Georgia. And it's a big facility there. It's called Bowen Mills Christian Center. And they meet there. They have conventions there. They bring the leaders of the different groups back so many times a year. It says, you know, the group has their own private airport nearby, managed by Daryl Cobb. Now, Daryl Cobb is the son of Buddy Cobb, who is now the leader of this group. And they have a, a president, but I don't know how much he does when I was doing it. His last name is Jeffries. That, uh, let me go on here. Yeah, this is Buddy Cobb. Uh, see, five teachings are carried on by C.E. Buddy Cobb and other leaders. And it says, currently the move is active in at least 14 states in the United States and 18 countries around the world. Um, this is a picture that was taken uh, just last summer, uh, 2013. This is at that Boeing Mills. These are all move followers that went there. Most of them are leaders that came, come from these other farms, as uh, they call it, in the, in the wilderness. And this is one of the, uh, the divine orders by Sam Fife. The first thing we want to say is that we must realize what God is doing with us in this move of God. He's bringing forth a divine order government to govern the world after the order of Melchizedek. 
We're not building a church. Listen to this. We're not playing church. We're not a bunch of preachers that are looking for a ministry. This is not even an evangelistic move of God. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> and he says, and this is not the full gospel move of God. It is not a healing of the move of God. It's the move of God in which is bringing forth a many-membered man-child to govern the world through whom Christ will govern the world during the millennium that to come. And if you heard Dave Clark's talk earlier, he explained about the man-child. That's that, that's that talking again. They believe that they are the manifestation of Jesus Christ on earth as a group. That they are... Yeah, so... Um, and that, that was taken from... I actually got that right off. If you want to see a lot of Sam Fife stuff like this, they got it all online. And actually, it's a good thing probably to start cap copying it before they realize we start using their own stuff. You know, that... Uh, so, uh, uh, and I just want to, I put this in just to give uh, a conception. Uh, this is a newsletter that uh, came out in October last year. And th this is the dates that the leaders, including Buddy Cobb, were going to visit all these farms. And just to give, and this isn't all the farms in the United States. This is just the ones that they're visiting. So, you know, you have in Alaska, you have Wasella, Delta area, Whitestone, the land, Haines, Huna. And then in Peru, Lima, Iquitos, Cucalapa, I don't know how to say that. Now those towns, they have that other one. Guatemala, Canada, where you were talking about the White Horse Farm, the Shepherd's Inn, Maine, Georgia, Mexico, Venezuela. You know, they're, they're, uh, and, and the estimates I'm getting and talking to ex-members around, there's still figuring there's about eight to 10,000 members worldwide you know, of, of this group. Uh, here's what's really interesting. And, and I called Dave, I had to call Dave up one, one night because I was doing my research. The Whitestone Farm in Delta, they do everything uh, organic. The, the food, the, you know, the vegetables, everything. Because I was reading the article about this and they were saying how hard it is during the dark months in Alaska, you know, to keep the food going and, and stuff like this. But these two guys here, I thought I had their name there, the father and son, they were in the walk. They were in the Church of the Living Word under John Robert Stevens. And even when I was talking to Gloria on the phone, she says, I can't, yeah, I, this is interesting. She says, they joined this group. Uh, they said about 50 of them from the walk joined with people from the move. Now, you're going to remember, there's a lot of similarities. And one thing Dave told me, too, that a lot of times in the group that he was in, uh, when people were not really under the control and they were rebelling, they would send them to the body, right? Isn't that what you, what you told me? Uh, a whole group from New Hampshire moved up to Alaska where the, uh, the body was. Yeah, Yeah. so... Um, yeah, this is part of the article. This article actually was in like a, one of those uh, agriculture newspapers in Alaska. And that, that, that's how, how I found it. See, and that's what they put... Uh, provides milk, and when they were interviewing those two, they, the, they were the members of the Church of the Living Word. There's a there's a Church of the Living Word in Palmer Lake. Oh, yeah. I, we drive by it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. I've heard it's a cult, but I haven't like been Yeah, there. actually, Dave and I are thinking of taking a drive there. <laughs> well, they're just down the road from my church. Yeah, they're, uh, they're in Palmer. We, right we ought to get together. Yeah, we're right behind Palmer Lake. Yeah. the monument. And yeah, they've got another, 28 acres there. There's another cult that's up the road. We can <coughs> visit both of them. Oh, we can go to some. But that one doesn't even have a name. I don't know where it is. You I just want to go back in the woods. Yeah, road trip. There we go. This here is the picture of Sapa, which is one of the Christian centers that wasn't mentioned in that list they were visiting. They probably would have those people. And I don't know how well you can see this, but I mean they're isolated. Uh, and this is the 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 area where they live. I don't want to call it a compound. I don't like. I know, but it is. You think? Yeah. Okay, I'll, she, said, she said it's okay. I can call it. <laughs> but uh, there, and I'll just give you some. Closer pictures here. Glory sent these to me. Uh, uh, this is where Glory lived in uh, in Sapa. This is the tabernacle where they meet. Um, so, um, and it's just on a little bit about Sam's five teaching. It says even today many of the moves teachings centers around Fife's divine order for raising children, which sadistically states that children should be beaten and whipped even if they can't. Uh, keep or don't understand the rules by their parents and other authority figures. <coughs> I know it makes you mad, doesn't it? It's uh, I, I, that's why I when 
I started getting all this, and I, I was telling Bill and Scott, I said, you got to let me do something on this, because, you know, uh, Dave and I are going to go up there and meet with about 20 of these ex-members uh, in the last week of August, so be praying about that, just to, to talk with them and counsel, to, to help them maybe understand a little bit more what they went through, mm -hmm. why they think, why triggers go off, I'm sure you guys oh, yeah. know that. Well, kids were called beasts. That's, oh. and, and they were to be regarded as beasts. And, 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 and like if you heard babies crying, that was demons. And so this is what we would be raised with is, you know, parents whipping on their kids because they're doing normal children things. And the thing that I grieved the most over was when I had my own children and I realized they're being kids and they're being fathers. And remember, we're having to sit through church from 9 in the morning till 3 without a break mm -hmm. and from 6 until 9 and as children. With, and we have to sit in with, just not Sunday school, it's we're sitting in with an adult environment. And so if we get fidgety or act like a child, then then you get the beatings. Did you two know each other? No. no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my, oh, my daughter's six. And the reason I won the custody case is because social workers got involved and there was physical abuse signs. Um, and so I was, I was able to get my daughter out of the cult because... She was, um, we were expected to beat her if she did anything wrong because she was demon possessed. And the only way to save her was to beat her. And um, she, we went through a lot of therapy to get over what we've been through. Wow. Well, that. praise God. And you're a believer now? And, well, wow. I tell you. It's, well, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm really happy that you guys are here. I, um, and again, this is the move of God, which is bringing forth a many-membered man-child to govern the world, through whom Christ will govern the world during the millennium that's to come. Therefore, we are God's divine government, and God is training us as a many-membered man, teaching us, training us, preparing us to be the government through whom the Spirit of Christ will govern the world. So... Yeah, just a... And the theocratic government. I know... Uh, <laughs> Christy over there with the Jehovah Witnesses, and you were in the Jehovah Witnesses, right? I mean, yeah. that you, you're familiar with that word, the, the theocratic. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's, the with Mormons. <laughs> and that basically means, just like in the Jehovah Witnesses, that they are the government. They are the organization. Right. And that's why when you, you hear about these sexual abuses and a lot of this stuff, it doesn't go out because the world outside of them doesn't exist. Right. That government is null and void. And it's pretty much the same, you know, in these type of groups. Yeah, now here it is. This was Fife's divine order. Glory sent me this because I really wanted this. I said, do you have anything on his instructions on, on the, what to do with the, child, the children? He said, how many parents say to me, I don't want to whip my child and keep whipping them or him? He can, he can do what I have told him to do, but it's hard for him. The rule and the law I have made for him is too hard for him, and I just don't want to keep beating him. I beat him and beat him and beat him, and he still keeps on doing it. He can't keep that law. I better stop beating him and praying for him. Now you now his response to that, Sam Five, is no, you better keep whipping him. Every time he breaks it, keep him ever conscious that there is a righteousness that must be fulfilled and that is uh, that he's going to suffer every time he doesn't fulfill it. Whether he can fulfill it or not, so that one day he can be conscious that he needs a savior to help him fulfill it. That is the purpose of whipping him. I believe. Obviously not related to party fight. No, I want to get uh, this. I want to grab these books here real quick. What's it, another thing that's real interesting? There's only been, uh, and actually I want to get this other uh, book out of here. I got it. Oh, this. One, yeah. This here. Anyone really want to study these people here? I don't know who they are. I just got this. Um, Jan Russell Juan Cohen. This just came out. 2013. What they did, they went to the internet and they put all the information they could find on the internet on the move and they put it in this book. What's the uh, title and author? Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the title is The Move, Sam Fife, and it's Jesse Russell and Ronald, Ronald Cohn, C-O-H-N. I don't even know if they were ex-members or, or what they're thinking. I, I, ju I just got this in the mail last week. And they have all the web pages, so if you, you know, to learn more about the group, and uh, now this one, whoops, this book here, I'm in touch with this this woman here, uh, Susan McConnell. She originally was on the farm in Mississippi, 
And it, from what she says and what I've read in this book, that farm, there were some legal problems. There were some things that happened that I'm not real sure yet. And it, uh, so the whole group moved. Half of them went to Georgia. The other half went up to Alaska. Uh, she wrote this book. This book, I'll tell you, uh, Paul, I don't think you should read it. You'll get too mad. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> the Still Before the Dawn by Susan McConnell. Now this girl, like I said, when people come out of the group, they don't know what's going on. Today she's a Sufi Muslim. And I'm going to show you. Um, this is her, uh, Suzanne McConnell. And uh, she talks you know, a little bit on the end of the book about why she went to this. To me, this was just jumping from one thing or floating from one thing to another, if you want to. They don't like girls either. Huh? Well, he says they don't like girls either. See, that's that's a problem. I know, when, and Dave and I, you know, when we've worked with people coming out of cults over the years, if they don't understand the totality of the dynamics of the cult, yes. it's very easy for them because they see something wrong here. And then they go and they see something they like over here, not realizing they're really stepping back into almost the same thing. You know, and... Um, uh, Now this is this girl, I, I and I've actually got invited onto the survivors page. I'm the only non-survivor on the survivors page. They actually took a vote. I didn't even know they took a vote. They sent it back and they said, "Mark, we all voted and we want you to be on there and we want you to 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 sort of talk to us even through this uh, Facebook page." And what she's saying is, Heather, she grew up in it. She says, "I don't come here much because it's triggering." And what that means, she doesn't come to this this page a lot. Because when she sees it, it's causing her a lot of anguish because she's reliving a lot of the stuff that she went through, you know, in the group. She goes, I've become agnostic over the years. Certain words infer infuriate. 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 Wow, man. Thanks. Infuriate me like the move. The land, the father, the ministry. The father, from what I understand, that's all the leaders in the group. That's sort of their loaded language, as I call it, or their... Their verbiage. She goes, I remember moving back from, and it, Uppsala, do you know where that is? I know. Uppsala. Uppsala? Yeah, it's up Sweet. in uh, Alaska. In Alaska? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, it, uh, and attending the body, <laughs> an, another word I hate, because that's another, like I said, the body of Christ is another term they use. In Canton, I always hated when traveling ministry came. I already knew the four hours I'd be in uh, blank, blank day, you know. And she, she was talking about how long she was in there. Uh, Ashley Campbell Smith, which evidently was a friend of hers when she was a little girl, and I would sneak into the bathroom and screw around. If anyone came in, we would pretend we were washing our hands, you know, and laugh out loud. Uh, so uh, that's that's a, a picture of her. Uh, this 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 is a new book. This book is coming out next month, <laughs> and it was written by another uh, ex-member, uh, Vinny or Vinny Angie Kosis is her name. Um, uh, but uh, she, this is part of the book uh, that she's writing. Uh, she goes, the victim of uh, physical, sexual, mental trauma under the guise of Sam Pipes doctrine. Cult child is told from the voice of the youngest daughter, Scylla Caprin, as her life consists of fighting to maintain just a glimmer of her own humanity. A broken little girl, Scylla believes. Uh, so, uh, you know, broken little girl, Scylla, Scylla lives a hopeless existence. Meanwhile, dreaming of the day when she will turn 18 and escapes Alaska's tundra and discover the secular world she has been forbidden to know, with an older brother who runs away, and a sister is often signed the hopes of being unnoticed, and a mother who believes it is all God's will. And uh, so, we're looking for this book, and it's uh, you can it says to be released spring, uh, uh, and that's her webpage, www.vinnycosis.com. Upsala's in Canada. I texted my sister. She would know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play. This is seven minutes. I'm going to let you listen to Vinny. There's only been two, two videos that have been done, and it was on the cross of moves forward. My name is Angie Benny Koshitz. I am an artist, a singer, songwriter, poet, and I am also a survivor of the Sound Fives Cult Move. I was in this cult from 1973 until around 1984, so from the ages of three until I was 14 years old. In the beginning, they were building a lot of farms across the United States, uh, 
a lot of the church services were being held in people's homes. And that's how my mother began to associate through the wife of one of my father's naval buddies. She began to attend church at this woman's home. And over the course of a few months, um, I think that my mother was probably already in